Hey guys, welcome to my video. So we are going to be doing a stencil dot mandala painting on a six by six canvas, which I have already applied two coats of flat black paint to. So here I'm just marking out my halfway points and doing my cross and then my X. And what that's gonna do is help give me some guidelines um, for where I want my dots to go. So I have been using vinyl stencils. So I have a friend that has a Cricut brand machine and she cuts out the stencils for me. So here I'm just setting up some circles just using a compass. Again, this is just for me to set up my guidelines for my dots. So anyway, back to the Cricut machine. My friend has a Cricut cutter and I give her silhouettes of what I want cut, and she cuts it out on vinyl, uh, vinyl for me. And we just use cheap Cricut brand vinyl because it sticks easily to the canvas without lifting up the base coat. So here is our Cinderella stencil. So you can see I just peel it up very carefully, and then I find the center of where I want it to go press it down and then I use the flat part of tweezers to push it down and that's just that paint doesn't get underneath it and bleed under there so this also helps to push any air bubbles out so that the stencil is laying nice and flat and then when we're done we'll peel it up and there should be some really pretty negative space so one thing I do like to do is go back over with my guidelines so that I know where I'm painting and just to kind of keep myself um, kind of in line, so to speak. And then I'm just going back over the circles with the compass very lightly, then just so that I don't lose my, my spot at any point in this painting. And I missed a little spot right there. So here I'm using an 11 and a half millimeter crochet hook I'm using my darkest blue. And I'm sorry guys, I don't remember the names of these paints or what brands they were because I mixed them probably about a month ago. So I use a huge variety of different tools. I'm using my smallest drill bit here and I'm just doing one dot on each of the spokes and then I'm going to go back in and put one in between each of those and I'm I'm very sorry that this video is so zoomed out I it is my first YouTube video so please forgive me and be a little bit um, understanding of my learning curve I didn't realize how far away this would be and how much detail would be lost so um, next one I promise will be better so now I'm going through with a slightly larger drill bit and again with that dark blue just nestling in a dot in between each of my previous dots and that's what we're going to continue to do. We're just going to continue to build up in size to build up that sacred geometry pattern. Um, and I know it might seem like a lot of work on the stencil when it's going to be taken off and we're going to lose a lot of that. but I do it so that I don't lose my spot for any of my petals or anything that I'm going to be doing that's going to be on the actual canvas. I want to be able to see where I'm supposed to be at. So that's why I put this much effort onto the stencil itself. So we going in with a slightly lighter shade of blue, again, moved up in size and just nestling that dot in between the dots of the previous row. And you can start to see that pattern forming just a little bit. So here I'm going with my smallest Susan Bates crochet hook. I believe that's what it is, or acrylic, or I don't know. They're flat-bottomed crochet hooks. So we're going still with that slightly lighter shade of blue. I'm going in between those previous dots and just nestling in a slightly larger dot. Just in between those.
so you saw me just count it, I tend to lose track of what I do. And so I always double check to make sure that I have the appropriate amount of dots. In this case, it's 16. So here we've gone with the next size up. We're going with another slightly lighter shade of blue. And again, just nestling that dot in between the dots of the previous row. But at this point, I am starting to use my circles to let me know where I need to be with those dots. So I will either keep them in the middle or use um, the, the line as my guide of where I want those dots to go. So you can really see that pattern taking shape and we're just gonna build it up. This is going to be our last dot row. This is my second lightest blue shade that I have. And we're going in with this orange flat bottom crochet hook. I believe it's a six millimeter. And just again, nestling in those dots in between. And just going in making sure we have 16 using those guidelines to keep ourselves in check and then we're going to use our lightest shade of blue and we're going to walk some dots we're going to make some petals so i like to start um, my petals i've been doing this a lot lately and i really like it where i will use you know, let's say a medium sized tool. So in this instance, I'm using my medium sized drill bit. So this may not seem like a medium size, but for my drill bits it is. And this is what I'm starting the petals with. And then what I'm going to do is take my nail dotting tool and work my way down with the same color. So this is a set that you can get on Amazon for about four bucks. They're really good quality, but what I would recommend is they do tend to fall out of the acrylic. So I would recommend just taking a glue gun and securing them at the base um, before they have a chance to fall out. So my white one that I love to dot with in this set, and if you do a search for nail uh, dotting tool, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. My white one from this set, the, the metal piece just fell out this morning, so I have to glue that one in. So you can see the petals form really nicely this way. Um, so you just dip once and then just walk that dot down. And as the paint gets transferred onto the canvas, the dots get smaller. So it forms really pretty petals, especially when you start with a slightly larger dot at the top than what you're using to walk your dot down with. So now we're up to just plain white, and that's gonna be the lightest shade we have. And we're using the same tool. So in my instance, my medium sized drill bit, and I'm doing the same exact thing. I'm just putting a little dot right on the top in the center, and then I'm going to walk some dots around it to form some really pretty petals. So 15, 16. 16 dots for 16 petals and then taking that same orange tool and just walking those dots right around the light blue dots from my previous petal and it just forms a really pretty lacy effect I heard that on a Kristen Urig video and I love the way she describes it so um, I hope she doesn't mind that I use that same description but it does it forms a really pretty lacy effect and it's just very soft and delicate and it looks so nice on the paintings. And so just finish out these dots, these petals, and go all the way around. Um, I do tend to have to clear off the built up paint off of my nail stylus but every once in a while. Ooh. <laughs> so here we're going in with um, just a light, very, very light turquoise. And all I'm doing is just putting a row of three dots in between my 
my big dots here just for just to fill in some space just to fill in the gaps and here I'm using my smallest nail tool so um, it's my smallest size it's the the small end of the pink and then we're gonna go with the dark blue and my smallest crochet hook and I'm gonna put these dark blue dots I'm gonna nestle them in between each of the petals and we're gonna build up just a tiny 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 border around these petals so this border is gonna just build up that that little mandala flower we have going on and it's gonna be just really pretty and soft and delicate and there's the last one okay so here we are adding in our next light of shade so we started with the darkest shade of blue and we've moved on to the next light of shade and I'm putting one dot on either side of that dark blue dot. And you can see how cute that makes it look. And then um, I decided I wanted to add some actual petals to the outside of the mandala. So I let it dry a little bit and I'm just using those circles that I had created and I'm just making myself some little petal guides so that I know where to put my paint. And it is pouring rain outside because it's Florida. So if you hear that rain falling down, it's nice and relaxing and soothing. So here we have our petals. And we're going to go in with our second lightest shade of blue. And we're going to start with our smallest crochet hook and just form that dot at the very top to start our petals. And we are going to decrease in size we're going to walk some dots so now i'm moving on to a fairly decent sized drill bit and i'm putting one on either side and slightly down from that top dot and that's going to start the process of decreasing in size and walking the dots down still using that same shade of blue and then we are going to use a smaller sized um, drill bit, still in that second lightest shade of blue. And just put down our next dots that are going to be walked down. Again on either side, and just still following that guideline. So here I'm using my larger end of my blue nail tool and my lightest shade of blue and I'm walking my dots down. And what that does is it creates a cool little, almost like a 3D effect for these blue petals. So again, you just put some paint on your tool in this instance and then start with your largest dot and continue to dot your way down and as the paint comes off of the tool it makes a beautiful um, chain of smaller dots and it looks really pretty and it helps you create your petals so I'm taking my largest nail tool and I'm only on my short ends so where my cross is I'm walking some petals or excuse me some dots out and in that instance I was using the lightest shade of blue again so here I've got some silver and in my corner petals so where my X is I'm gonna do the same exact thing that I did on the previous petals but with silver so we're starting with the um, smallest crochet hook and here I'm using a drill bit and I'm doing something just slightly different where I'm starting my next um, 
dots and I'm only walking one down and that's just to help extend that size a little bit. So here's my next size down drill bit and the same thing. I'm just walking it just once just so I don't have to walk so much because it does have further to go. Um, so I don't want to walk so much with my nail stylus tool. So here's my largest, bl my larger blue tool and I'm walking all the way down now. Again with the silver and when it dries it looks really pretty. It has a really pretty shimmery effect to it and it looks really nice. So here I'm using my pearl white paint from my last row um, for these petals and I'm doing the same exact thing just walking them down just once with my drill bits and I'm going to go back through with my nail tool and walk them all the way down and this just creates a beautiful 3D effect. Um, it makes it glow, it makes it look like the paint is just so shimmery and pretty and shiny and I love I love using these paints together and I, I quite often use the silver and the pearl together especially with my much 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 lighter paler canvases um, and I like the top dot with them too on my bright color canvases because it it just adds a little something that is truly unexpected. So here we're just finishing out walking the dots. And so I'm just taking that really light shade of teal and I'm just walking them, I'm walking some dots on the inside of those petals and that just adds to the 3D effect. And it's just, you know, could never go wrong with more dots. When in doubt, dot some more. <laughs> and we are ready to peel up the stencil. Bum, 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 bum. So this is my favorite part because then you get to see what is left behind. And I know some of you are probably going, but all that work. But look at how pretty this wound up being. And it, it almost looks like there's a sunburst behind Cinderella. So I'm just taking my largest nail, dot, nail stylus dotting tool in the pearl and I'm walking that down in my corners. There you go. There you have it. There's Cinderella. So you can see there's Cinderella. You can go back through and dot um, the very border of her. So kind of like what I did here with Elsa. You can see how I delineated her with some small dots or here with Belle. But over here I didn't do with Ariel. I haven't decided if I'm going to do it just yet with her. But here's Cinderella. She's all done. And I hope you found this tutorial informative and fun. And again, forgive me for it being my first. Um, I hope you like it. And if you did, just go ahead and hit subscribe for me. All right. I promise you I'll make some more. And I promise you I'll be a little bit more zoomed in next time. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye.